You are listening to the Fresh Take Network. What it is, what it do, welcome to Fresh Take, Joshua Adam William Arbuthnot, and a pleasure to have Stephanie Seaborn here on the podcast today. Hey, Steph. How's it going? It's going good. So, uh, you know, as we kind of, you know, look this week and kind of honor some women of the past in Alberta basketball, uh, you're definitely a name that came to mind. You were a, uh, a Mrs. Basketball back-to-back times. That's right. Miss Basketball Alberta. Uh, but we're going to take it all the way back. Uh, kind of what's your first early memory of, of playing hoops? Um, my first memory would be my dad signed me up for just community basketball. And I cried going to like the, it wasn't even a tryout. Like it was just where they'd go and play student teams. And I just did not want to play. So that's like my first memory. I just didn't want to play at all. Mm-hmm. And I just gave it a shot kind of for that season. And that's all my dad pushed me for. He's like, just, you just have to finish this season and then we'll see. So did that, didn't love it, took a break. And then I just went to um, just a summer camp at Burt Church. Um, this is even before I had moved to Airdrie because I grew up in Crossfield. Yeah. Um, so this is before we moved and went to the camp there and then the head coach at the time just kind of noticed that I had some athleticism and just kind of recommended we try certain things so that's kind of where it all started so that kind of after that so you started off with the initial not loving it but that camp at Bird Church kind of brought a little bit more of the love on yeah for sure like and I had just kind of been playing in the driveway and I don't know, enjoyed it a little bit more and then went to this camp and started competing against girls and I think probably gained a little bit of confidence. Uh, community ball sorry I lost you for the internet there for a little bit that's right can you hear me now yeah okay anyways you're talking about falling back in love with it yeah so just I think going to that camp helped me gain a little bit more confidence just in my ability and then just learning that there would probably be more more opportunities outside of just playing in the driveway or community ball because I mean I didn't really know like I was pretty new to the whole scene of basketball so yeah that's probably where it all started and then when did you move to the Airdrie area we moved to Airdrie right before I went into grade nine yeah and then there's there, you know, for those that don't know, like, you know, there's such a legacy of Bird Church basketball and with the Gallup Spring. So like, as you're kind of, you know, going along, were you kind of getting excited about, you know, being in, in the uh, part of that Bird Church Institute? It's kind of funny because I had no idea. Like okay. I was honestly just going in blind. Um, but when we had moved to Airdrie, we started going to church in Airdrie and then kind of learning like, oh, who... Alan Gallup was and who Carrie Gallup was and the Wenzels like just all these names that were kind of coming in and being like oh okay so this is actually a relatively competitive program so but yeah I had no idea (laughs) and you're one of the few we'll get into like kind of some of the stuff there but you're one of the few players that have their jersey retired there yeah um is actually a surprise I had no idea that it was happening for me um I just got asked to come play in an alumni game and I was like yeah for sure that'd be so fun and (laughs) 
my I was kind of wearing like a ratty sweater my mom's like you should give me that sweater I was like I'm cold I'm like I'm just gonna keep it on she's like no 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 like you should give it to me and then they kind of asked me to come down because they had a presentation and then I kind of knew but yeah I had no idea was there anything for your number that went into your number at all the only thing was I had to be number 13 my first year playing Alberta ball mm -hmm. and then I just kind of it just kind of stuck yeah. so but other sometimes than that it's just random. Really. sometimes there's a meeting sometimes it's yeah. just random yeah uh, just random what are some of your favorite memories of uh of playing at Burt Church oh man so my first year playing varsity or senior um we had I had Doug Wild as my coach yeah and I don't know if you've ever heard about Doug Wild, but have, yep. super smart, super intense. So it was so great to learn from him, um, but definitely intimidating kind of going into it. Um, but then after him, we, we kind of had like a different coach almost <laughs> every year after that. Um, so yeah, it was just, I don't know what my favorite memory would be, but um, just learning different things from each coach. We, the coach that I had in grade 11, I can't even remember his name. He was super, super old. He used to coach uh, Simon Frazier when they were in the NCAA. Like he helped right. yeah. coach with them. So we were kind of like, sweet, like this guy know the stuff it's gonna be great <laughs> but at one time I remember him being just about asleep on the bench like he was really old so oh it was it was fun it's one of the but better yeah, gyms to, to play in too one of the better gyms to play in the atmosphere can get yeah, exciting super yeah it was really intimate like there's just like the one side yeah. of bleachers but some of the softest rims in Alberta. Yeah. Like it was like a vacuum, which was nice. If you were so at that time, day. then you're starting to kind of develop with uh, other girls in Alberta, which is a really competitive class at that time. How was it as you started to kind of like find the landscape of other uh, Alberta basketball women? Um, yeah. So kind of when I was telling you about that camp that I went to, um, Doug Wild at the time, he kind of re recommended that I try out for CP and then I don't know if you remember that center for performance. I don't even yeah. know if it's still a thing, um, but tried out for that. And then that kind of led me to um, team Alberta trying out for that. And yeah, it was kind of interesting being able to do that. And then you'd go back to your high school and go to tournaments and see girls from Alberta that you played with over the summer. And I think, yeah, it just kind of boosts your confidence a little bit, um, you know, being able to compete and know these other girls that are super competitive and, and good at what they do. You Is know? there certain girls so, that you kind of uh, were aiming at to like, when you face some certain one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I mean, when I first played Alberta, like we had like Janelle Beckering, and Melissa Colborn, like those were the girls that you kind of looked at and you're like, oh man, like those look, they're so good. Like, I hope that I can get to be as good as them one day, you know? Um, but I'm just trying to think of girls like other than Katie and Alex Cole, uh, Cole. Alex Cole Nicole Clark, Devin Kendall. Mm -hmm. Um, Megan Lang, she was a little bit older than me. Uh, that was kind of that but, point guard circle at that point in Alberta between Megan, Katie, mm -hmm. and Nicole. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. cause you were a year behind that class though, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I I mean, was. we actually, we were talking to Scott the other day and I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit here to that Alberta team and just Scott talked about it. And, you know, as a, as someone watching it, I could say like such a tough break when you look at the injuries, right at the end of it, Alex Cole gets a concussion, Caitlin Arbuthnot, mm -hmm. uh, 
who I guess for Brock since it is my sister. Um, <laughs> she gets she gets hurt. She has a high ankle sprain. You get hurt. You come in in crutches. Where at one point I think up until the Ontario game, you were coming in crutches, playing, going on the bench, back with the crutches, and and so on and yeah. so forth. Till finally the Ontario game, you're like I, you just couldn't go. Katie couldn't go, and then it was a loss. But that BC game, I do believe you toughed it out for a little bit, right? Yeah, I remember fighting with one of the coaches because she would make me crutch to the game. They yeah. would tape me up so tight to play the game and then crutch afterwards. And I just thought it was like the most ridiculous thing. But yeah, that ankle sprain, it happened the first game and I was jumping up and down trying to defend an inbounds pass and I just rolled my ankle on nothing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just kind of get to a point where you know, there's a difference between being hurt and injured. And I just kind of had nothing left in the tank at that point. I do think if that team is fully healthy, that that team wins. Totally. We not like we were just skilled, but like just the chemistry of that team was yeah. really good. It was really so, well in touch. And the skill, like yeah. you said, was there, but you could tell the chemistry was there too. But when you have, you're leaving four out in you, you're leaving point guard out in Katie, and then you lose your five and Alex Cole at that point. And you're talking about, I think from your class, I think you were like at least the number one of the top three recruits if not number one recruit. And you're talking about Katie maybe being the number two point guard in that class, Alex being the top pull in her uh, post in her class. Like you're losing top mm -hmm. edge recruits from Alberta. Yeah. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Uh, so <clears throat> Bird Church, you guys, did you guys end up winning the national championship there? Um, a provincial one or, oh yeah divisional yeah so yeah. we we usually win divisionals and then in our zone we only had foothills in our zone mm -hmm. they were the only other 4a school so we would do a best of three and yeah so every year we went to provincials each year yeah so. How did the, uh, how did, the, we're going to get to Canada stuff in a bit here, but how did the recruiting process start at BYU? How, uh, what grade did they start looking at you? And was there other colleges that were looking at you or was it always BYU? Um, so that team with Katie, the Alberta team, we had played in a tournament in Colorado that summer. Yeah. And there were quite a few scouts there. I remember seeing, um, so I had gotten a few letters after that, um, but I believe um, someone, another coach had talked to BYU for me. Do you remember Robin Fairbanks? She played in Raymond. Yeah. Um, BYU didn't recruit her and she ended up going to UVU and just destroyed down there and broke a bunch of like rebounding records and just killed it. So yeah, I think a coach had told BYU about me and then they moved, like they were pretty quick to get in, in touch with me. So yeah, they were, they verbally offered me in grade 10. Wow. And obviously, you know, uh, being LDS, I'm sure that helped with the process as well, because they have a, well, sure. I won't get into it, but they have a strict, you know, policy with guidelines and being LDS going to that school definitely helps. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, you had the commitment in grade 10, but was, and I, was there, was it always the hope that you would get to an American school or was there Canada West schools, uh, youth sports schools that were trying to, even after the grade 10 commitment, trying to make you switch your mind at all? Um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to go play in the States mm -hmm. and even when I was younger, like I always thought, oh, BYU, that'd be so fun. But then I kind of before really getting into it, I was like, oh, it's probably out of my, out of my reach. It's pretty competitive. Um, but once, yeah, once they made the offer, I was pretty excited to go, but I talked a bit with Shawnee, with UFC and Scott. Um, but I, yeah, I kind of had made up my mind that I wanted to go down South. And then you had a chance to go to FIBA and do some stuff with Canada. Uh, you did the U17, and then you also did the FIBA stuff uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. What were both experiences like? So um, when I made the team, um, 
So I would have been going into grade 12. So I would have had finished my grade 11 year. So the process went like you could either come to the open trial or, or be invited. So I had been invited to the tryout. And then if you made the team, you stayed there and then you'd practice. I think we practiced for about 10 days and then went to Argentina. Mm -hmm. And I had a terrible, terrible tryout. Um, terrible. Like I could not hit the broad side of a barn. It was not good. But um, yeah, when they sit you down, like you kind of already are like, oh yeah, I'll just go in there and they'll tell me to leave and it'll be fine. Um, but I made it and I was super pumped and surprised, but it was a pretty tough couple of days. Just, you know, we had 10 days to kind of get used to each other. Uh, you know, we were practicing twice a day. It was just pretty tiring, but, but super amazing experience. And it then to go seem, play in Argentina was awesome. Well, in the U17, you make the second team uh, Canada. And then for you, 18, it does seem as you start getting going, your minutes start going up and you start to like, you know, maybe get your confidence about it. Your numbers start going up a little bit before you do end up leaving. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember the coaches saying like, stop worrying and just go out and play. And I think that just helps you mentally to hear that from a coach, you know, cause then you do, you're like, okay, I've got the green light to just like go and play. And then you're not thinking so much. And then the game just kind of flows a little bit easier. And then automatically your confidence is just going to go up. Was, uh, was it the UA team was at the end with your relationship with team Canada? Um, yeah. So I could have had the opportunity to go play um, at NIDA. So it was the National Elite Development Academy. So I would have moved to Hamilton um, and just been in that program. But I decided not to. Um, and I just kind of wanted to stay home my last year of high school. And then I had committed to BYU. So I would have been going back down to school right away. So I just kind of decided to be done there. And so then you, um, you end up going to BYU. How, how, how crazy was that experience? At least let's start with the freshman season. How much of a kind of a shock was everything? Oh my gosh, that freshman year was, I like, I think one of my classes, like I forgot that I had a class <laughs> and I didn't do anything for it. So academically, it was a shock. Um, physically, it was a shock. Like I had moved down there and I was already getting texts from the team saying, hey, we're doing pickup right now. Like you need to be here. And so it's like, oh my gosh, like just not really easing into things at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was, it was trying in a lot of ways. Cause you, you come from, you know, kind of being the best on your high school team, you know, playing Alberta ball and stuff like that to, wow, you're playing with all these other girls that were also the best on their team. And you just kind of get your butt kicked a bit, but. Did you guys ever go to the it. tournament any of the three years that you were there? Yep. So my third year, we went to the tournament. We lost to DePaul in our first round, but uh, we got there. Yeah. At least you can say you got, got into it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We lost uh, by three points and it's kind of crazy. Like you lose, they get you up and out of there right away. Wow. So. What was uh, uh, the other side of the years there? I mean, you can kind of see as you go up, like, you know, you pick, you redshirt the first year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then the second year, you come and play 29 games. Uh, then the th your second year, you really have a jump up. It's your highest scoring average in the years. And then your third year, you're finally starting games as you make this slow progress. Mm -hmm. um, so my freshman year, there was a three guard or shooting guard ahead of me that was just really experienced and just a really good player. So yeah. I made the decision to, to red shirt just cause I wasn't, I wasn't going to get many minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, my, my second year, um, again, still just kind of trying to... from downtown, which is wild. <laughs> 
yeah, my coach, so Jeff Judkins was the coach and he was a genius basketball wise, just X's and O's, like super good coach. And I was coming off the bench and it was kind of my job to just go in and, and light a spark basically and just hit threes. <laughs> That's all he mm -hmm. said to me was, he's like, you just need to be ready to shoot and you just need to hit them. That's your job. So what was, uh, I mean, you're, you know, you play, uh, you play Duke in there, you play Gonzaga. Was there like a favorite game that you had or like, you were like, I can't believe I'm playing here right now. My basketball journey's led me here. Um, playing at Duke was pretty surreal. Um, just an unbelievable atmosphere. Like, I don't know if you've ever been inside the Cameron Indoor, but I, I just, haven't had that luxury. No, it's tiny. Like it's not not very big at all but just even for the women's games like the atmosphere was incredible yeah like you can hardly hear yourself think so it was pretty cool to be there gonzaga is really cool to play at that i have um, as i lived in spokane yeah 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 awesome arena and yeah, yeah fun to play there who, who was uh probably your biggest rival utah state mm, utah utah right university of utah yeah what were those games like it's always interesting because it's like I didn't grow up in Utah like I knew about the BYU Utah rivalry but I was like eh, I don't really it's whatever it's just another team but it's like once you play start playing them you're like okay yeah I, I don't like them <laughs> I think but at that of, time do you not cross over with Dylan Pachinski being playing for the Utes at that time too um I don't like I don't remember seeing him but I think it was at the same time yeah. Um, but then my also my other really good friend Taryn Wachowski mm -hmm. played mm -hmm. for the U as well, and Michelle Plouffe played yeah. there as well. Yeah. So we saw them a few times. But no. What was the uh, the campus experience at BYU for football games and just other kind of like you obviously miss Jimmer uh, and whatnot, but like what was the experience for like going to other games? Yeah. So Jimmer was there with me for one year. Oh. So okay. I was Did you there, ever meet I was him? There for the. I met him. Yeah, I met him a yeah. few times. Super nice, like quiet dude. Yeah. Um, but so I was down there for like the Jimmer mania and mm -hmm. whatever. And it was crazy. Like I I know that professors told him not to come to class because it was such a distraction <laughs> for students. Really? Yeah, I imagine. Um, yeah, no, it was pretty cool. And then I one of my teammates, I lived with their family for for part of my freshman year, the Kafusis. So she mm. had a few brothers that played on the team. Yeah. And her her dad coached the D-line. So yeah, it was so, so fun to go to games and support other other sports. It's gotta be so, so cool now. Like you see someone like Zach Wilson just get drafted to the Jets mm -hmm. and you get kind of to be like, oh, that's my alma mater. Mm -hmm. So cool. Um, so you don't go and do your senior year, but at this time, you know, you fall in love, you find your future husband and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that was a part of the decision that led to it. Yeah. So I was pretty much done with school. I just had a few elective classes. Um, I had been married. So I, my last year there, I was already married. Yeah. Um, and with visa rules and stuff, Travis wasn't able to work while we were living there. Mm -hmm. So he was back and forth quite a bit. So it was just kind of straining on our relationship, I think, just having him having to go back and forth. So I just kind of made the decision, you know, I'm done, basically done my schooling and I just kind of had to put my marriage first, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Did so, they, yeah. was there a lot of pull to try to get you in there for the senior year? Yeah, like I, my coach, when I sat him down, he was kind of like, well, I'm not going to just take this right now. Like you need to go sit and, I, and think about it a little bit more and then come back to me. Mm. Um, so yeah, a little bit, but I think at the end of the day, they understood, right? Like there's more, more to life than basketball. So, but Have yeah, it was a decision around that time was there ever ideas of Europe or anyone having interest in you no no and looking back at it I kind of wish that I looked more into that I think it would have been such a cool experience but 
yeah, I think it was just time for me to be done with playing. Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, you, you leave, like you said, you get to go to Duke play there, which is really cool. You get to live the, you know, of, I mean, how many Albertans really, right? Like, you know, Canada basketball is growing so much, but for Albertans, you're one of the better Albertans that really have gotten that chance to go down to the States. You get to do something that really not many Alberta women that have gotten to do. So it's a pretty good exclamation point yeah. on your basketball career. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was such a great experience. Lots of work, but. So uh, is there any connection now with basketball still any coaching or anything like that? So when I moved back home, well, I moved back to Lethbridge and I coached at the high school there for five years. Yeah. So um, I kind of finished up right before the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I got to coach for five years and it was so fun. How far um, did you guys get? So we got to, I'm trying to think, we lost one year um, in the semifinals at Provincials. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was heartbreaking. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we, made it to provincials each year and did fairly well but that was I think the best that we got we won bronze so what's the difference that you've noticed between yourself as a coach and yourself as a player oh man that's a tough question um I, I think I yeah I enjoyed coaching more than I thought that I would um I just remember being a player and how certain coaches would coach me mm -hmm. and it was like they were telling me stuff but weren't trying to like kind of see things from from our perspective so I really tried to do that as a coach is kind of like put myself in their shoes and try to understand what they might be seeing instead of just like talking at them mm -hmm. you know so just that I'd say so when you look back at your basketball career, what, what are, what are some of your favorite uh, last like kind of memories or stories that you remember? Honestly, that team with Katie and Alex, that was probably one of my most favorite teams. Um, and that last game, well, one of the last games where all of us were injured. Like I remember Katie bringing the ball down, just sobbing. Yeah. And we're like, what is going on? Um, but just being able to, it was just such a good atmosphere where we were so competitive, but like I said, just had such good chemistry that we all really enjoyed each other and had a good laugh all the time. Yeah. So I loved that team. Um, going to the tournament was really neat as well. Um, man, so, so many i would have to like sit and think about it I mean, and i imagine again like being on the campus during the gym or stuff uh who, who would you say is the the biggest athlete of all time at least the vibe there because you had like jim mcmahon steve young um yeah. danny uh has been there obviously danny ainge also obviously jimmer yeah uh, and i might be missing someone but who did you feel like was the biggest at least like the granddaddy athlete um I would probably say Jimmer. Yeah. Um, and then I was there at the same time as Ziggy. Do you know who Ziggy is? Ziggy heard, Ansa. Yeah. yeah. So he came to BYU to play to run track. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he kind of started eating American food and just put on like a ton of muscle. Yeah. And the football coaches were like, You should come and play football. And incredible athlete like he was so good and so fun to watch but yeah in terms of like the hype I would say Jimmer for sure yeah Ziggy I ended up playing for the you know for the Seahawks and for the Niners Lions. and the Lions so he the had Lions a pretty good career bit, yeah. yeah again I think that's yeah. so cool it's something I'm so Crazy. jealous of my alma mater I'm not really able to have that ability and you just had a guy that went second in the NFL draft yeah that's pretty cool like I knew he was good, you know, watching him and stuff, but then to actually see him get drafted that high is just so cool. And I guess like the last thing is, you don't have to answer this, but the Brandon Davies thing, when that happened on campus, as people know, there's strict rules. And I think, you know, that's what the rules of the university is. What was the reaction to that when that happened just before the tournament? Oh, I think, 
there's a lot of mixed emotions. Like I think mm-hmm. a lot of people are kind of annoyed at him and mad at him and, but and a lot of compassion as well. Cause that's, would be so hard. Like he played a huge role on that team, you know, but we had something similar happen to a girl on our team and yeah, it's kind of hard to watch and kind of seems like, Oh, really? Like, come on, like just let him finish or let him, yeah. let him play anyways. But um, yeah, it's all done in a super loving and supportive way, but it's still kind of hard to see and kind of frustrating, but And uh, now you've kind of onto the better, the best part of your journey being a mother. How's that been? Yeah, it's been good. It's been humbling for sure, but, but so worth it. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson you've learned in that road? (laughs) That your children come as their own people. Um, You can have every plan and whatever in place but they truly come as their own people and they make their own choices and and you just kind of have to roll with it and then my last question from and obviously you know being a coach from the time you were playing Mm -hmm. to now with women's basketball number one how women's basketball has reacted to obviously this final four tournament was really well received and like oh this final Mm -hmm. four may be better than the men's WNBA Mm -hmm. seems to really be growing what have you kind of noticed when you're coaching and looking at the outside of kind of the evolution of women's basketball growing the past 15 years? Um, I would just say the girls are kind of more aware of, yeah, like what's going on in the college scene, what's going on in the WNBA, and they're a little bit more invested um, than some of the girls that I played with growing up. Like, I think it was not for everyone, but a lot of the times it was just kind of like a social thing to come and play. But for the girls that, that are really invested and really care, yeah, they're just kind of more aware of what's what's going on. So. All right, Steph, I'm gonna have to get enough of your time. Thanks so much for coming on and talking about your career with us. Yeah, thanks for having me.